Welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Sermon for Sunday, July 20th, 2014. Today, Pastor Bob Hiller brings us a message entitled, Pulling Weeds, based on Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, and 36 to 43. Let's listen in. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Our text today will be taken from the reading in the Gospel of Matthew as we discuss the parable of the wheat and the tares. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we give you thanks this day for the promise of our salvation which you gave to us in our baptism. For Lord, uh, we will hear today of the fearful judgment. We will hear of the, uh, the evil in this world. We will hear of things that give us terror. So in the midst of this, Lord, remind us of your promises. Remind us of our baptism and keep us close to you. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray and send your spirit to us and speak to our ears and to our hearts to give us faith to trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a tremendously bizarre mural at the Denver International Airport. Have you ever seen there's, online, there's actually a conspiracy theory about this mural. So if this interests you, go home and look this up and you can read all kinds of wonderful conspiracy theories about the Denver International Airport. But there's this massive painting at the airport. It's sort of this mural on the wall and it comes in two parts. The first part is really creepy and the second part is there to give us hope. Now. The first part, I'm going to show it to you, and it's kind of creepy. It's going to look like a scary G.I. Joe character, so be ready for it. But as you arrive in Denver, sometimes you will see this painting on the wall. Welcome to Colorado, everybody. Uh, here is a very scary soldier with a gas mask on, a, a huge gun in one hand, and a machete in the other. Now, I, I cropped this out, but on the end of that machete is a dove. So welcome to Denver. Leave your doves at home. See, that's the idea uh, you get here. But this is a creepy thing. And, and now you'll notice, as we're going to talk about this picture in a second, but you'll notice behind him a rainbow. I want you to keep that rainbow in mind. We're going to revisit that rainbow. We're not going to get to it quite yet, but we will come back uh, to that picture. But right now, just look at this soldier. And if you can see by him, there, there's people weeping. Uh, there's people in sorrow. They're on this, this sort of road of tears. It's a very depressing picture. And what in the world is it doing at the airport of all places? <clears throat> not only is it a bizarre picture, a creepy picture, but it's very much out of place. Well, why ever they put it there, I think we can all agree that it's not a particularly enjoyable image. As you look at this picture, if you're anything like me, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to look at this picture for a very long time. This picture does not conjure up good feelings inside of me. It, these, this doesn't present to me a picture of hope or happiness or peace. Rather, it's absolutely terrifying. And the reason it's terrifying, I think, is because it conveys images of a reality that scares us. We recognize this soldier. He does look kind of cartoony, but we recognize this image of a gas mask and, and weaponry. And these are, these are images that depict oppression and suffering, hardship and violence. This is a picture that reminds us of the reality of the sadness that is in our world right now. And we want to look away from it. We want to move on from it. We want to kind of pretend like it's not there, but so much like the difficulty and the suffering in this world, that's just not an option for us. When you go to Denver and you walk by this painting, you can't avoid this. We cannot avoid the pain and the suffering in this world. We wonder why God won't just take it away. But the reality is that the world is full of evil. The world is full of sin. The world still seems to have the devil's influence in it a great deal. Now, Jesus tells us a parable today that kind of depicts the same reality. Jesus in his parable of the wheat and the tares today is going to remind us that the devil's work is going to remain until Christ returns. Uh, that the work of the devil is a reality that we're going to have to face. The text is, begins with Jesus preaching to the crowds. The crowds are following Jesus around. They're trying to figure this guy out. They're trying to figure out who he is and what he's come to do because he's claiming to be ushering in the reign of God. And as he does so, he heals the sick, he gives sight to the blind, he does some wonderful things, and yet at the same time, he's not taking over the world. Peace isn't everywhere. 
they're still oppressed by the Romans. They're still suffering. There's still hardship. There's still a lot of demon oppression going on at this time. And so people are wondering, who is this Jesus? And is he really what he claims to be? If he truly is ushering in the reign of God, why is there still suffering? Why is there still sin and why is there still hardship? So Jesus tells a parable today to kind of explain this to us. He tells the parable of a farmer who goes out and like the farmer we talked about last week, just throwing his seed all over the place. He's planting his crops everywhere he can. He's planting wheat in the field. Now, Jesus is the farmer and the, and the field is the world, okay? And so Jesus is going around preaching his gospel to everybody with an earshot. Uh, but Jesus says in the parable, the farmer that night goes to sleep. And while he's asleep, uh, the enemy shows up. His enemy, his rival, and his enemy sows tears, <laughs> excuse me, tears in the field, sows weeds among the wheat. So as the crops grow up, the servants start to notice that the crop, the world, the field is full of weeds and tares growing up next to one another. So the servants say to the master, should we go out and should we, should we pluck the weeds? Should we get the weeds out of there so the wheat has room to grow? And surprisingly, shockingly, the farmer says, no, leave them there for the sake of the wheat, whatever that means, leave them there. And I will later on, when it's time for the harvest, send out my harvesters and they will separate the wheat from the tares. But for now, the two must grow together. Now, Jesus is going to tell us later on when he explains the parable that the wheat in the field represent the sons of the kingdom of God, the, those who are faithful to Jesus, those who believe in the gospel. The, the tares represent the sons of the evil one, those who deny Christ, those who reject the gospel, the unbelievers, the sons of the evil one, Jesus calls them. And a time will come, Jesus is saying in this parable, when the followers of the devil, the enemies of Christ and his good creation, will be weeded out. They will be dealt with justly. Those who would not have Jesus to take their sins, those who would not listen to God's word and repent, those who would put themselves up to be their own gods will be judged and condemned. Evil will be removed from this world. Suffering will go away. As Revelation says, there will be no more tears, no more sorrow. It will all be removed. It's just that that's not yet. Right now, we live in a time where we cannot look away from this soldier the devil continues to do his ruinous work. And for whatever reason, God only knows, that's the reality we must face until Christ returns. And that's hard for us to look at. We want to look away. We want this stuff to be removed. We don't want it to be there anymore. And yet we cannot avoid it. Just think about the news. Like You cannot avoid this stuff on the news. Just think of the news on Thursday night. The three main stories I saw on CNN on Thursday night on my computer were this. Israel starting a ground attack against Palestine. So you have war. You have a, a plane being shot down over the Ukraine. So you have acts of terrorism, I think is what they've sort of officially said that was. I'm not entirely sure. And then you have, a, 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 let's see, what was it? A digital bomb supposedly left in the NASDAQ to wreak havoc on the stock market. Good heavens. Now, I don't think anything came of that one. If you, if you heard more about that story, let me know. I don't think anything came of it. But we did talk about that one at council, and, and uh, Doug Wicks was saying that that's a fear of the people who work in the stock market is digital terrorism, people coming in and messing up the stock market. All of this stuff going on in this world, and so we live in this, this time of fear, n not to mention just your everyday wars, the constant oppression against the church, the continual efforts of our society to silence the word of God, our own personal sins, our own personal temptations, our own personal trials, all of these things going on in this world right now, and we'd love to look away. We'd love to pretend like it's not there, but like the gas mask soldier, the stuff just isn't leaving. It's growing up right next to us. It's not going away. At least not yet. Back to our painting here. Now, in this, this picture, I didn't do a great job of cropping. I'm sorry. Uh, don't forget the rainbow, right? We saw this rainbow just before. Don't forget that rainbow behind the soldier. The rainbow, if you get the, the flow of the painting here, is moving you somewhere. It's moving you kind of away from the soldier, and it brings you here. This is where the end of the rainbow is. What you'll see in this picture is, is lots of children 
from every tribe, nation, language, and tongue. And if you can see, there's a ribbon running through them, and it says the word peace in all kinds of different languages. So children from all over the world are gathered together, and they're circled around at the end of this rainbow in laughter, smiling. You almost get this, this feeling of joy in dancing as they stand around the soldier, the one who represents evil and destruction, the master of war. He's been defeated. And you'll notice I mentioned the thing about the doves. There's two doves right there on top of him. I couldn't get him in because it was just too weird of a picture. Uh, But you'll notice here, and I, I don't know if you can see this, this is a sword right here. And there's a little boy standing above the sword with a hammer. And he's beating down the sword. He's destroying the sword. And it calls to mind that verse from Isaiah that says, They will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, and nor will they train for war anymore. Yes, right now we live in this time of fear, this time of terror, but there's a time of hope, of joy that we anticipate. A time of peace, eternal peace. That's why I like this picture of the rainbow. Rainbows remind us that storms are over. Rainbows are something to anticipate in the midst of the storm and in the midst of the trial. There is something beautiful to look forward to. Rainbows remind us of peace after the storm. That's why I like this picture of the rainbow that that begins even with that scary picture, but carries us beyond that to a time of hope. A time that reminds us that the work of evil, the children of the devil and their fruits are going to be overwhelmed by love, by laughter, by mercy and by peace. This is the the promise that Jesus is making to you and to me this morning, to his disciples and for all of us who have ears to hear that there there will come a day when everything that counters God, all that is evil and wrong and false in this world will be judged and condemned. This parable promises us that Christ will return and he will make all things right. The parable kind of functions as a promissory note to the church, that the weeds will be pulled. A promissory note that says, this is your future. This is what Christ has purchased with you, uh, for you with his blood. A promissory note written in his blood, certified by his resurrection, and given to you in your baptism. The weeds will be pulled. Your sins will be removed by Christ. You who wrestle with your sins, you who look for the coming of Christ, you who anticipate that day of peace, you who trust in him, this day is coming for you. Jesus says, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They'll be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is a a parable that ought uh, ought to strike fear into the hearts of those who so brazenly oppose Christ. And yet it's a parable that gives you and I great hope as we suffer under the oppression of sin, death, and the devil. As we, look, as we think of this parable today and as we look at this painting, I want us to be reminded of this rainbow, the rainbow that begins already in the picture of the evil. Uh, The rainbow that begins already in the midst of the trial and the struggle. The rainbow that reminds us of the promise that will carry us all the way to this day of resurrection. That rainbow reminds us of the promise of Jesus. That Christ who is not unaware of the suffering in the world right now. He's not unaware of the pain in the world right now. He's entered into it himself when he died on the cross. And as he's come to us in the midst of this suffering and this trial and this struggle... He makes us a promise that he will carry us all the way to the day of resurrection. Jesus will give you peace and bring you to the last day. Like the constant presence of the rainbow, Jesus is present with you. And just as the rainbow carried us from the picture of evil to the picture of peace, Jesus will take you from this veil of tears all the way into his presence forever. 
That day is coming for you. It is a promise. Everything will be made right. And you and I who have been baptized into the kingdom of God, we shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this promise. We pray, Lord, that you would give us faith to trust in you. Lord, we do live in a world where we are surrounded by evil. And at times, Lord, we must confess that sometimes we are the ones doing evil things. So, Lord, please forgive us and renew us. Make us bold, Lord, to proclaim your salvation to the world so those who do not know you would find shelter in your grace on the day of judgment. Have mercy on us, Father, and teach us to follow you faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For more information on Faith Lutheran Church of Moore Park, California, and for more podcast episodes like this one, visit us on the web at www.faithmoorpark.com. Music by Kevin McLeod.